Hello everyone, we are going to be ranting about Spire Entertainment today and their abysmal treatment of, uh, of, of Omega X. With me today I have Mike, Trish and Christine. Oh look, where, who's in the chat? Let's see, we've got, hi we've got Mel um, Melinda, we got, oh Trish is there, Makita. Okay, we've got a few people. Um, say hi and let us know where you're from. First of all, Spire Entertainment. Well, look, I we've all seen what's... Well, if you're on Twitter, you've seen what's happened. I imagine there's a few YouTube videos about it that I... Um, but I've mostly got my information from Trish <laughs> because because we have some Omega X fans in, in the uh, in the Hagdom and... Or X they represent. Are look, we're, mm -hmm. seeing, we're seeing kids being abused. Kids are being yeah. abused. Mm -hmm. um, they're away from their parents, and they, these are kids. It's just not, you know. We can. I mean, you might not think they're kids to, to us. They're kids. So, oh, they're um, kids. Right, first of all, tell me um, before I let you guys loose. Omega X. So, what happened? Omega X was formed by. Was it a? Was did they? Was it a reality TV show, or did they just form? No. Because they've no. all been in shows before. Mm -hmm. No, they were I mean, all in, in groups other before, groups. Sorry, groups yeah. before. So how did Spire put them together? Did they just recruit them? or I believe that, that was the case. I, I don't know the specifics of it, but they did form them from people who were either from groups that had disbanded or they are temporarily on a hiatus, uh, which is the case for Sabine. Um, most of his groups in the military right now. Um, so yeah, so this was like their second chance, and so they got these guys who were like, des yeah. desperate and vulnerable. Desperate yes, and vulnerable pretty much. Yeah, who yes. basically do anything to try and have another go and be successful. And right. that's, that's part of how from. they they blackmailed the members into being quiet about all of this stuff because they threatened yes. things like, other than the physical abuse that was threatened, they threatened them with not getting another album no mm -hmm. promotions yes. you know and and it was awful and these yeah. kids want these kids would do you know w w would do anything because they they're that was exactly what they said when they when their first appearance for their press conference back in i think it was early november mm -hmm. uh jayhan says they they basically were afraid they felt this was their last chance to make it in yep. the industry mm -hmm. and they were afraid to raise any concerns about their treatment lest they get cut right just like that yeah. right you know the other part of it too is like they were on sinking ships before so right. it's not like they, this wasn't their first rodeo and they had experienced some of them had experienced similar treatment perhaps yes. oh yeah not, K -Dong not, talked about it yeah not maybe not quite to this level so it was not that their expectations weren't all that high to begin with going into this as well Mm -hmm. So they were desperate and they were not looking at this as abnormal treatment in, in, the, mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. so, and, and, what, and what was interesting, too, is I, I liked how Jehan and some of the others mentioned during the press conference that they weren't doing this just for them. They weren't coming out mm -hmm. and suing the company and making this public just for them because it is quite likely that this is happening to other idols and trainees at other companies particularly the smaller companies We've absolutely seen it happened before the east light boys who phys got right. physically uh, abused yep. you know that was well, one of the basically molded, let's be honest you know mm -hmm. do we have so. a bit of a timeline How, when did we first when did we first well discover? i i saw them live on their tour in louisville on october 9th I believe it was the next weekend when they were in LA. It was like On the, the last stop. Yeah, or, or I guess it was two weeks then. There was the last um, of their tour, and the you know there was some video of first the CEO came uh, yelling at them, um, mm -hmm. berating them, um, and then they all just looked very dejected and. And then it escalated. It continued on when they got to their hotel. And that's when like the the fan who was there caught the video of what appeared to be the CEO uh, pushing Jehan to the ground. She had already been making fun of him in the previous location because he was not feeling well. He was quite possibly having a panic attack. And she was just 
making fun of him, telling him he just needed to quit if he couldn't, if he didn't feel well. You know, she's just said some horrible things, you know. Yeah. And um, and so it just escalated. And then as as more and more information came out, we found out that later in the night she was trying to get into the rooms to continue berating them. They called um, the police. Called yeah. the police. There, I believe there was one manager maybe who had stayed behind with them after like she left and everybody abandoned them here in the u.s um who was kind of keeping her away um but yeah it she was did not come across as particularly um hinged <laughs> mm -hmm. no mm. and she prior a one thing that i don't think um timeline wise before they left for the tour they were cut off from their um fan social cafe media. Yeah. they were cut off from social media oh, they, they 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 mm -hmm. their passwords were were changed they mm -hmm. were not given the new passwords so this yeah. was before they even left for the tour they were cut off from 4x from communicating with 4x yeah, yeah. completely well and then like the there there was the report of the abuse that happened on the south american leg of the tour which mm -hmm. before they came to the u.s they were supposedly in uh there were maybe chile it was um, in chile they were, and they were uh at the airport somebody saw them being berated there too by her mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and then there was some problems with them getting out of the country and to new york um yeah so it was just one thing after another that the promote they swapped out like um the promoter like a couple mm -hmm. of times there mm -hmm. were situations where like people who the fans who had bought certain types of packages and stuff didn't get everything they had at the Louisville stop, there was no merch at all. Not even no a merch in Chicago. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and despite all of that, and it's like, I, I wish I had known what was going on at the time because I would have probably gone full mama bear <laughs> and found that woman in Louisville. Mm. But, I, but, but I she talked was, to this woman in Chicago. I actually had a conversation. Oh my with God. Her. No way. Yes. Oh. Holy Moses. But it's like, despite everything that they were going through they gave a phenomenal performance and i remember saying after it was over i was like if these guys had the money and the backing that like 17 has mm -hmm. they would be get i mean they were giving a, a on what limited uh, uh, ability that they, they had a as far, show. they gave a fabulous show and they could be 17 types of performances if they mm -hmm. had that type of backing yeah yeah, they're all incredible performers. Oh, yes. yeah. And beautiful, gracious people, you know. When you had the chance to get your Polaroids, they gave you, you they gave you the full attention. They yeah. Were, they did the best they could. And I, right. And you, know, and you had it no kind of clue breaks, that this was going no, on. No, it broke my heart to know that they were, they were struggling so much with a smile on their face. You know yeah. what I mean? That that's, and, that's the thing, you know. And it's so difficult because in situations like this, you want to say... Um, I, I, I want to swear. Well, you, I can swear. I want to. You just want to say fuck K-pop and everything about mm -hmm. it, you mm -hmm. know. But then yep. you also think, God, these kids are working so hard. I need to support yeah. them. Right. right. Really Confl right. You're conflicted. Right. It's right. so conflicted, and so, not just you know. Sometimes because you don't want to be part of the problem. You don't exactly. Want to right. the I didn't even want to support right. them. I can't believe hey, I bought the albums. Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just um, you got to. You want to support the kids, but. Jesus. Well, and it, and and thing, it, go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Another thing that it, when they were in Louisville, uh, Hang Young was he actually sort of addressed some of the problems that the tour had had mm -hmm. so far. And like he said, oh, yeah, we've had some trouble and thanks for supporting us and everything's all fine now. And now knowing that he was probably made to say that mm -hmm. or he said it in hopes that they wouldn't lose support from the fans or whatever. Mm -hmm. That just mm -hmm. breaks my heart too. And yeah. it was just mm -hmm. like, and knowing that he was one of the ones that now he's having to have, you know, um, therapy and stuff because of everything that was going on. It was just like, I just want to give them all a hug, <laughs> but yeah. that's not a good thing to do in this situation. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. did it all come to the surface? Was it, there was some leaked Twitter videos. Yes, it was after the it was after their LA concert um, in you know like the what was the twenty third you said Mike of yeah. October. Yeah, um, and that whole the, incident, I think the set the 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 the, um, the straw that broke the camel's back in that incident was the boys were doing their last show of the tour, mm -hmm. and they didn't thank 
spire on stage. No. Yeah. So that caused the CEO to lay into them at dinner afterwards. She just right. lost her mind. Well, yeah. She, the thing is that this CEO may, managed to somehow make everything about her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. very, she was even going on about why didn't you take care of me? Why didn't you yeah. comfort me? And yeah, I was, she was like, I was sick too. Why didn't you take care of me? And, and trigger warning. I'm like, she had, I guess at some point, threatened them saying that she would unalive herself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So. Imagine that kind of pressure on these kids, your CEO threatening that. Mm-hmm. It's just ridiculous. I, it's, it's the most uh, unprofessional it's thing. It's yeah. traumatic. It's just the trauma of living in this situ- that amount of stress constantly. Well, and, you're in a, it, and you're in another, and you're not even in your own and country. And you can't get away from it. Right. You know? And it's like, but and yeah, then they I, strand them here. You know, oh. and then they had to them and their families Cancel had their to cancel the flights home. Um, they had to use their own and call their parents to help them get mm-hmm. home to Korea in the first place. Um, Eleven people. What? What was it? Thirteen people total. Yeah, because flights the to Korea. Was there. Yeah, mm-hmm. flights yeah. to Korea on the on on the the last minute. We're talking mm-hmm. about sixteen, seventeen thousand mm-hmm. dollars just to get home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And that's on their families. How yeah. do you how do you say, Mom, Dad, get me home? You know what I I'm mean? I'm stuck in America. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. And she basically was treating them like her own little, like, you know, group of men. She's, she's yeah. like, come drink with me, touching their thighs, sitting next to them. I mean, there are... There's photographic ev- ev- evidence of her being right up in their yeah. business. And so, she had yeah. fangirled over them uh, like yes. a year before even signing Yee them, Chan. she had fangirled Yee- over you. The baby, the baby. The yeah. baby. Yeah. Just so now, I, I will say, you know, we're calling the kids and a baby. And everything. They're all grown men, but no. yes, yes. Can cons- but to uh, in comparison to like my age, they could literally mm-hmm. be my children. You know, mm-hmm. so it's exactly. sort of like the protective instincts come out, even though yes, they are Mama all bear. grown mm-hmm. men. Okay, but at the time, he was still a teenager. Hot. Right. And there's another thing being rubbing up against them as a grown ass woman. Okay. Mm-hmm. There are yeah. there's a line appreciating someone's beauty and being physically on top of somebody. You know, oh, yeah, I mean? being a sexual as- assaulter. Especially yeah. when, mm-hmm. when she has a position of power and authority. Oh, completely. Them. Like what are they They're, gonna do? Hit knock her hand away if she puts right. her hand on their That's leg? That's the thing, but, yes. They they could you know, not physically react in any way. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. otherwise that you know, yeah, I she mean, could have ended their careers. <laughs> they could have ended their careers. Now, again, yeah. desperate. I mean, they're all very, very talented boys. We're going to put, just like Trish said, with the right backing, We, we but they're in the land of talented boys. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? They're not yeah. living in a bubble. They're, they're a, I'm not going to say they're a dime a dozen, but that's how they are treated. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Disposable. So, I mean, what are they going to say? Don't touch me. Don't, I'm go- not going to drink with you. I'm not going to do all of this. Of course not. That's what yeah. they're going to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was, it was a, it was a power play on her part. Um, but then like, as far as the timeline goes, it was like that in November, they, um, they came out and it, they, since they were like Christine said, they had been cut off from all of their social media and the fan cafe and everything. So they kind of, they went out and started their own Instagram, you mm-hmm. know, the group, all of them together. And they, and then they had this press conference at the Seoul Bar Association, which I love where they had the press conference. It said a lot about it because it was the Seoul Bar, Bar Association's human rights room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and they mm-hmm. had their two attorneys there. And, the, you know, the attorney said that first thing we're trying to do is get them out of their contracts. Mm-hmm. And then I think once they're free of that, then they will go after, um, you know, damages. Um, and, well, you know, four days later after that, Spire set, all set, sent them all a bill for basically 20, exactly 230,000 a piece. It's, it's so. Uh, the one of the things that I marked in this in this article that just really burned me up is the way they in their response to that uh, first uh, court appearance they write Spire says we aren't denying that we as creditors cursed at the debtors 
Spire Entertainment's representative. Mm -hmm. They're referring to their artists as debtors. I mean, they're it's debtors. like yeah. they're debtors. That's all it is. That's all it is. They're, mm -hmm. they're, that's all they are. Mm -hmm. they're, money. they're not seen as people. They're, they're seen as people. products. No. And no. that was actually something that was it Jay Han that said, somebody said it at, during that press conference. It said, we want to be treated as people, not products. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, again, going back to press, they tested for COVID, positive for COVID right. in Chile. Oh, yeah. and, and they were forced to perform breaking the law. And so, lying I about mean, it. And lying about it. So, and, you know, okay. So not only were they treated as nothing, they're risking their health and the health mm -hmm. of others. So that right. just shows you the, the complete disregard Spire yeah. had for everybody, but but what they were looking to get out of this. Right, right, uh, which is like, the money. That's They just wanted to make money. money on the tour. Money mm -hmm. and, you know, personal access to a cadre of beautiful men. That's how I kind of feel like that's, yeah. you know. And sending them I, the if bill. I were her husband, her husband's the chairman of the company and like his wife is doing all, I'm just like, what is wrong with this that's couple? Some twist, there's some twisted shit right there. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. But it was just very interesting. What I like, what I do like though, is that they copyrighted their name. They yes. copyrighted the, the fandom name. And they also said, you know, we're we're gonna take this upon ourselves to be a leader. And I right. really appreciated that they said that. You know what I mean? It's gonna be oh yes, yes totally. Let's burn it oh down. Oh my god, let's burn it down. Yeah, but thanks, Nikita, for that. <laughs> <laughs> but the other part of it too is like the what what the 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 woman that we're speaking of supposedly resigned. Oh. But later huh. we find we found out that not only she is not resigned, but she's got herself a new group of boys to groom and put oh, right I back just, into place. Yeah. And, and they're trainees, so you know they're they're probably younger. And mm -hmm. if I were those kids' parents, even if I had to like something I had, I would get them out of there, knowing yeah. what has happened to yes guys who are even older. Yes, right. they're actual trainees. So we're talking about teenage boys we're not mm -hmm. talking about potential men we are talking young kids kids mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i'm like where are the parents i want to smack them please i mean i think there's got to be you know like I, I i we have these conversations in this kind of k-pop world we live in and we're Westerners too, so we got to look right. at it from through our own, like you know, moral glasses, you know, our, our cultural perspective. Right. But when the end, at the end of the day, you have to look at who are we serving. You know, you have to serve your next generation. You have to serve your children. We're trying to raise children to pr pursue right. the future, and we're not protecting these kids. You're saying this industry right. is going to tear you apart, tear you down, and treat you like garbage. But maybe you'll be successful. And mm -hmm. if you're not, mm -hmm. what are you left with? And right. I don't think that they're a bunch giving of them debt. Mm -hmm. debt and no marketable skills because right. they're not going to school. I mean, they are, but they're not. You know what I mean? They don't so you have education. Yeah. Yeah you're, yeah. you're not talking about marketable skills. If you can't sing and dance professionally, you're not making any money. So you're going to be in instances where these people are going to be able to take advantage of you. You're going yep. to be in instances where they're going to be able to hold things over your head because the next step is out the door. And once you're out the door, it's very unlikely that you'll ever get back yet. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. that's the sad part we're at. You know what I mean? And I don't want to impose my, my Western views about, you know, their work ethic or anything like that. Well, and like you point out, Mike, it's a cultural thing. It's, it's right. We're talking about in that, not just in the K-pop industry, in mm -hmm. industry in South Korea in general, there is a, 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 I think this article in Korea, Julong Daily, refers to it as immoral but enduring culture of physical right. and verbal mental abuse to control right. your underlings. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. part of the mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, there's been studies that link drink their drinking culture to that as well, right. where they have to have the social, mm -hmm. there's social pressure to mm -hmm. 
to be with your coworkers and your bosses and having this social mm-hmm. interaction that goes above and beyond their, right. you know, work related interactions. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And it, You're on the job all, all the time. And it all feeds into it. You know, you have no separation where you can say, this is my life. Everything is your life. Mm-hmm. You know, it becomes mm-hmm. all consuming. Yeah, that was something I, I wrote down too. It's like I was reading about, they said that a lot of entertainment contracts in Korea, they do not define like work hours or set any sort of limits on what the artists uh, can be reasonably expected to do. So right. basically anything goes. Because they're contract like, workers. They're not They're not hired workers. They're not work for hire. Mm-hmm. They're work under contract. So right. they have mm-hmm. no protections under their normal labor laws. That's something that's always been a case you know it's yeah. interesting though that the uh, the south korean government just in the last week or so has uh, said they're going to start looking at potentially making some changes because of a lot of this stuff that's coming out because you've had this situation you had the situation with lee sung gi uh not mm-hmm. being paid for his for his music for like 16 right. years or right. something. And told he was trash. They told him he was trash. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Can it you burns. imagine? And then oh. Chu from Luna right. seriously yeah. getting yeah. booted from right. the group after she questioned mm-hmm. some things. And um, not one of the, the Luna the girls had gotten paid. Yeah. Just like yeah. the Rose. Not yeah. a penny. Look at Luna. So successful. Not being paid a penny. Not None one of cent. those girls have been paid a penny. Mm-hmm. And but it's it like this has been going mind. on because BAP went through the same thing, mm-hmm. you know? And it's just, it's, I just think that the whole industry needs to have, for lack of a better term, a come to Jesus meeting, yes. you know, and clean itself up. I mean, the fans would still be there, right. you know, if, as and maybe even attract more, um, if they cleaned everything up, treated people like human beings, you know, instead of just disposable cogs in a wheel, you know. Right. Well, that's this groundswell is happening now. And it it happened, I think it was maybe in first gen or second gen of the K-pop wave when the contracts switched from some of them lifetime, 15 Jigma. years. They all went down to seven years. Now, the seven yeah. year mm-hmm. contract is standard. So but that was seven or eight years ago, maybe. So there has to be this change taking place right now. It's before it was contracts. Now it has to be treatment. It has to be the way these yeah, idols are yeah. treated. Well, yeah. I I think the ba- the basic thing for at the first step they need to do is that they need to not be contract. They should not be employees contract for hire because mm-hmm. they work. A they need hourly. They need normal work protection. They shouldn't right. be like. They shouldn't be self employed under contract. Right. They are not. They're told mm-hmm. when to be, where to be, and how to be. And that is yeah. not a contract employee. That is right. an actual employee. Mm-hmm. I mean, right. under, like US, think... under US labor laws, we'd be like, that's crazy. You're not <laughs> right. under contract. And we're right. not going to 1099 you. We're going to W2 you because we worry about tax law more than we do people. But that's an important mm-hmm. distinction. So, right. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? You know, well, and they have to at. work. They work back they 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 work off their debt right and i mean in in the west we call this indentured servitude i mean it's basically they are working to um pay back what the company put back put out right and if they're if they're truly a product well that's not the way it works with products either so they're not they're not they're not working it on either end of the spectrum Products yeah. are developed. I think they that there is back. it's lost leaders and things like this. Right. You don't you don't yeah. get your money out of something you invest in if it right. doesn't succeed. You right. don't get paid. Yeah. Right. I have to wonder if kind of this groundswell of artists standing up for themselves and the government beginning to look at the situation is partially a product of how much K entertainment has gone global and the mm-hmm. eyes of not just Koreans are on mm-hmm. these situations, right. but Americans and, and, you know, people well, in South America and Europe and where we look at how we treat people and employees and contract workers much differently than- This all started than, with the Korean wave. And the whole, the whole idea behind the Korean wave is that we bring Korea to everybody else. To yeah. We have, yeah. we have the, the soft invasion. Okay. That's mm-hmm. what it really, let's be honest. That's what it is. It's mm-hmm. a soft, subtle invasion. 
-hmm. of Korean culture, Korean products, Korean everything. If you want your customers to accept your product, you're going to have to abide by their customer's morals. You're going to have to right. look at the window yeah. that you're trying to shop and say, maybe we, we have to reevaluate how we sell our products because the people buying the products are going, hey, we don't want to buy shirts from Malaysia because they're being produced by 11 year olds in sweatshops. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same thing. I don't want to buy my K-pop if I'm going to be purchasing it from a company that's producing it on the backs of naive children, you know. Yeah. And, it's, and it goes to well, well with a lot of the cultural appropriation as well. You know, that's just exactly like, what I was thinking. They don't mm -hmm. want to know about it. It's like they right. just when they do fix it, it's just because oh god, all right. But you know, they don't. Very mm -hmm. few companies have sort of thought, okay, we got to take this really into account when we do stuff. Right. Yeah. They mm -hmm. slap a Band-Aid on it until everybody forgets that situation and we move right next on minute? to the next right. one. Right, mm -hmm. right. Short-term memory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's how I look at it all, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, look, thank you. Thank you for your rants. Because we have really enjoyed. Thank you for thank you for our commenters who had a really active comment section with a lot of people ranting. Yeah. Um, we would we would, we really hope that this is the start of something. But honestly, I just feel like I don't know something something I don't know what what has to happen. It, it, whether this they go to court and something changes, it may change well, this already, company. They, yeah. There's another court, court date coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So There's we'll another see, court we'll date see what coming. happens then. We'll see what happens I, then. I actually feel fair, just because I did a little reading about what what they're, they're actually filing, and I feel very confident that they actually are going to uh, be successful. Um, it, it they're following down the same kind of pathway that Shinwa did, mm -hmm. and they're going about they're going about it not just about their physical stuff, but they're also hitting the money, and yeah. in mm -hmm. Korea. The money is probably more important than everything else. So, and that's sad, but it's like the world. It's true. And it, it, it's, it's interesting, too, because like you were talking earlier about the terms that, you know, their name and the, and the fandom name that they cover. They also protected the hashtag protect Omega X, which yes. was yes. fan started in the wake of all of this stuff. Mm, yes. And the guys actually said this was a big impetus for them to having the courage to come forward yeah. and, and say yeah. what had happened. And yeah. that hashtag is still ongoing. And I yeah. mean, I think that yeah. the fans are not going to let this go. And the yeah. guys seem very united and, you know, they do. And, and yep. dedicated yeah. to staying together as a group, um, seeing this through mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and for themselves and for the industry as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Um, what, what? Who else? Look, if you would like us to give our opinion on another shitty company or <laughs> or another, oh. you know, drama that's happening out in the K-pop world, just put, pop that down in the comments or tweet at us um, on Twitter because um, we uh, want to do, would love to do these uh, rant clubs on a regular basis. So um, let us know. But in the meantime, um, be kind to everyone on Twitter. Um, support your groups as much as you can without supporting shitty companies and we will see mm -hmm. you good luck next <laughs> one if i can find the outro bye